What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Simply Complicated Podcast, a podcast where us three idiots take the simplest of things and make them far more complicated than they ever need to be. I'm Prama Liquid, aka Sam, and of course, with me, as always, is James and Alan. How are you guys Yo. doing? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. How is everyone? Uh, I'm ill as anything with the flu. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure you'll. Uh, I'm sure you'll pull through. At least, at least you had a test though, so you know it is only the flu. Yeah, so, yeah, I can't the, complain. Yeah, there is. Well, I can uh, complain, and I will complain, but it could be worse. <laughs> oh, so does, does this mean it's not my rant this week? I'm not going to rant. No, don't worry about it. It's just a flu. It's just going to sneeze everywhere. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just want somebody to take my ranting <clears throat> position because it seems like every week I'm the only one who has a rant. Because you're the Mona. Why? I've been. I've you. been ranting. You just haven't been noticing because it's been really subtle. I've just been saying, fuck Jeff Bezos. <laughs> and this was the moment this week. <laughs> just had to make sure you fit that in. Uh, I mean, in fairness, there's a very big fuck Amazon, fuck game, fuck all delivery companies in general topic. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later because that's going to be quite funny, I imagine. So we're uh, a whole list of topics to go through this week. So uh, how about we uh, we just get started and jump into them? Let's go. All right. So I think the first one we should probably mention is it's not really anything that's going to impact like your average gamer or anything like that, but it is a big, big step forward for like gaming content creation. So things like streamers, video makers on YouTube, and all that. Um, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven obviously going to be a massive, massive game on release if it finally ever gets released. Mm. Um, they have put in an option to basically remove all of licensed the all of the licensed music from the game and replace it with non-licensed tracks. So typically what you would have to do before is just completely mute the video when there's like a copyrighted track playing. Whereas now you can just completely change it. Like you don't have to mute the audio or anything like that. You just have a non-licensed track playing. So this is good for those who don't record, don't stream and that. But also those who do want to make some content actually can yeah. and still have some music playing during. pretty good for content creators hmm. I mean, it's this, a huge step forward that that's literally what i was about to say like this is the first time a company's ever actually gone out of their way to make content creation so easy and viable i'm like, just hoping i'm just hoping it leads the way for other people to do it as well other games to do it i it's really a, do hope so yeah it's the clever thing to do because it helps both the streamers and the YouTubers, but it also helps them because people aren't going to be scared to play their game. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of people are scared to play specific games because of a specific track that might play in it and so on and so forth. Yeah, well, um, that's but- the thing. It's like um, Persona 4, a very, very big RPG title. Well, RPG, JRPG. Um, when that first came out, I wanted to get it and cover it on YouTube, um, but Atlas, the company who made it, were just straight up striking any video that was basically past the first chapter in the game. So it was like, okay, I'm not even going to touch this game because, like, if they're going after content creators who are actually promoting their game like this, then fuck them, you know? Yeah. I always imagine that if the song's in the game, it gets let off for DMCA. Because, like, otherwise, how how do you play Guitar Hero or Just Dance and stuff like that on stream? good point, actually. How do you stream Guitar Hero and stuff? So but... there are there are a lot of songs you can get away with, and obviously, if the video has full consistent commentary over the track, um, you can claim as it's derivative by nature because of the commentary, and thus it'll fall under fair use. Now, any smart lawyer will basically reinstate the video, like they won't like take anything further on YouTube and that. Some of them, which I've typically noticed with places like um, Warner Brothers and Square Enix and that, they'll basically just turn around and say, no, I don't give a shit. Like, that, that's our music. Like, no fair use, none of that bullshit. That's our music. You're fucked, basically. But they won't strike you. They'll just take the um, the revenue from it. In Warner Brothers' case with, like, Kingdom Hearts and that, um, they'll typically just shut the video down. Like, they'll block it worldwide. But they won't strike you. Um, strikes have mainly gone away now with uh, video game creation, unless it's like a really blatant, obvious uh, misuse. Um, But I think it is slightly getting um, better. But this is definitely a big, big step in the right direction. 
Because, I mean, it's obviously seen as, like, a really friendly move for content creation. And it's like you said, James, now people are going to be more than likely to actually do it and cover the game. Obviously, it's Cyberpunk. People were going to cover it regardless. But now people have that extra reason to, which I definitely think more companies should do, but they probably won't because of the extra effort involved. Because when you think about it, they have to create the original piece of music for the game. Well, they don't have to create it. They have to hire <coughs> like somebody to create it. But then yeah. they would also have to hire somebody to create a non-licensed track to replace it with. They don't need to do that. They can just pay for the rights so that they don't have to like that. The tracks that they make for that game don't need to be licensed. Yeah, they can just have it so as that everyone can use it. They don't need to do two different types of tracks. Yeah, but that's going to cost a hell of a lot more. Like if you got some big name musician band whatever to make a track for you, if you wanted it like fully licensable, that's going to cost a hell of a lot more than just getting a track made. Yeah, I think the more issue is when they're actually playing songs that are like on the radio. Those are the biggest issue ones. Um, big whereas if you're making the song specifically for the game, I think that's a little bit different. I mean, I agree. But what about things like um, the Final Fantasy uh, music? So obviously Final Fantasy, massive, massive franchise, one of the biggest gaming franchises there is. Um <sighs> The music from those games is actually quite often taken on tour now around like operas and concerts and things like that. So back then, it was only game music, you know. It's like, yeah, it might have come out on like um, an original soundtrack CD in that. Whereas now, it's constantly being played at concerts and things. So it can change over time, which again is a little more dangerous, I would say, in terms of copyright. Um, whereas this just leaves you protected regardless of what happens, I think. Yeah, and, and we've gone through about YouTube, but I don't think YouTube's really the biggest issue. Um, you might get a strike on YouTube, but they don't last so long and you've got more leniency, but it's more Twitch that I think benefits from this. So Yeah, absolutely. I would agree, but do you know about YouTube strike policy change they did, I want to say, a year or two ago? Is it not still the same, whereas it's like three strikes and you're out, but no. a strike only lasts for 30 days? No, it's completely different. Um, so the three strikes and you're out rule is still <clears> there. <throat> but um, a single strike now lasts for, I want to say, three months. Um, the first week that you get a strike, you can't upload or live stream. So as soon as you get a strike, your channel's dead in the water for a week. You can't do anything with it for that week. Um you can't monetize while you have a strike. Um, you can't stream while you have a strike. And your videos are all manually reviewed while you have a strike. So that's three big points there where YouTube are basically just saying, okay, if you get a strike for the next three months, you're fucked, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's not good, but it's it's still better than Twitch. Whereas it's a strike is a lifetime and free strikes and you're instantly banned. And there's no way of unbanning. So I think in that sense to me, in, at least with YouTube, there's a little bit of leeway, but with Twitch, there's nothing. If you get a strike, then that's it. You're, you're good, to, good as gone. There's no way of overturning I mean, it or anything. I, I can see that, yeah. I mean, like, I definitely see this move from uh, Project Red as like a reaction to Twitch and the DMCA complaints. Like, yeah. I 100% see that this is where they've gone with it, less so than like the YouTube side. Um. But at the same time, like, I can understand why the strike system is so serious on Twitch. Because at the end of the day, like, it should be common sense. Like, don't play copyrighted shit. It's like, how, ma how many streamers have you guys seen where they're playing, like, Beyonce, Eminem, or whatever in the background? I've seen a few on Twitch that nothing happens to them. But you say that, but that I agree with, but... The point is, is that if they're playing a game, especially if they've never played it before, and a song comes on and they don't know that it's going to come on, they shouldn't be punished for that, which is what I'm saying in the sense of, this is a good thing that Cyberpunk are doing, and more games need to start doing it for the streamers, not so much the YouTubers. Yeah. Um, because you never know what's going to happen next, and if a song comes on and you get DMCA'd for it... And so, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's not their fault, though, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to Twitch, you'll have people using the um, royalty-free songs on Spotify, but they're not all royalty-free. No. Yeah. It's the same with like when you YouTube like royalty-free music and then you come up with this random channel. 
It's like that's just a channel who's stolen songs from like um, Epidemic Sounds and things like that, and they'll just upload them. But it's like yeah. that's not royalty free. It's like you still need to pay for the song on the website. You still need to have a disclaimer in your description where you got it from, the song name, the artist, and all that. It's like there are still things you need to do. Yes, you can use it if you get it from the correct source and actually follow their rules with it. It's the yeah. same sort of principle, really. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, I just, I really hope places actually go this route more often because oftentimes they'll actually have multiple elements in there, like terms of service. Um, a big one is Kingdom Hearts 3. So Kingdom Hearts, another big franchise, even if it is like majorly going downhill now. They actually have two clauses in their terms and conditions. One is for streaming. You're fine to stream it. You know, like, you don't have to worry about the music or anything like that while streaming. But if you upload it to YouTube, you cannot upload the music. And a lot of, yeah, a lot of games actually have similar clauses where you're okay to stream things, but you can't upload videos of it, basically. And I think it's just a case of because the stream isn't always there forever, essentially. It's like, yeah, you can have VODs and highlights, but, I mean, they don't last forever. Well, highlights technically do. It's yeah, like, well, I mean, I've, I've got a video on my channel that's like six hours long that's been there for like six, six seven years. Yeah, that'll be a, <laughs> that'll be a highlight. A highlight? Six hour highlight? Yeah, six, 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 seven hours. Stream. Yeah, no, like, you can, <clears throat> you can turn full streams into highlights. That's how you keep them there forever, basically, on your channel. I do it with okay. all of my streams. Like, I just highlight the entire thing from start to finish, and then it's always available as a VOD, basically. I did not know that. And as a side note, which we won't get into, but you do realise that Twitch actually save every single live stream you do externally, right? Hmm? Yeah, there's an external website where it's all saved, which is why people are still getting DMCA strikes even after they've deleted all the VODs. Hmm. Because they're actually stored on a server that Twitch has got. I did not actually know that. Yeah, we won't go into it today, but maybe we can go into it at some point. But Yeah, I mean, I, I do feel for people who get the DMCA notices on Twitch. At the same time, though, like, if you got it from game music, yeah, I, I feel bad for you. If you got it because you were playing Spotify, I'm sorry, that's your own fault. No sympathy. Yeah, but Twitch need to look into that. It's like, um, I think his name's Jake and Bake or something. He got a DMCA strike for a car driving past him playing music. Seriously? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, you almost got banned for it. Oh, my God. I That's mean, harsh. It has been a big thing that Twitch needs to look into the, the DMCA thing. It's like, that's been going back and forth online now for a couple of weeks. And I think they are starting to take notes slightly. But at the same time, they're also basically giving Twitch users the middle finger. It's like when the DMCA notice all first started and Twitch did that, like, oh. online, um, like, sort of like TwitchCon. Um, they basically ignored all of the drama and were like, here's a golden capper, have fun! And everyone was just like, are you fucking kidding me? What is this? Like, we don't give a shit. What the fuck's going on with our channels? And it's like, that was one of the funniest disconnects I've seen in a long time. It's like, I yeah, think... I don't... Oh, go on. I was going to say, I don't think they really know how to deal with it. They're, they're struggling big time. I mean, a lot of companies are like that, though, really, when you think about it, aren't they? A lot of companies just completely ignore the backlash, and then it just gets even worse. Yeah. It's like, you have to acknowledge it and sort it out as soon as it starts, otherwise it's just going to grow and grow and grow. So, but yeah, I mean, I really hope this does spark a new movement for games, especially with the PS5 and Xbox Series X. I think it will. Uh, it makes no it sense to. not to. Yeah, it has to. Hmm. Um, to give content creators the freedom just to be able to play it without worrying about being, like, get given strikes and stuff, is a big enough statement in itself. And uh, if more games start to do it, they might be more inclined to actually buy these games anyway. Yeah. Well, it's, as I say, I mean, I was going to get Persona 4 when that came out, but because Atlas were going balls to the wall against YouTubers, I was like, nah, not, not worth it. I'm, I'm not even going to bother with this. So, to this day, I've never played a Persona game because that was going to be my entry into the series. But because of all that, it's like, I just never bothered. And since then, they've released, like, six or seven games that honestly probably do fall right up my alley, but I've not bought a single one of them. No. So, I mean, they're lost, really. But it's like, if they right. lost me as a sale like that, how many other sales have they lost? You won't need to in the future. They're on the PS Plus thing. Persona. Persona. 
Yeah. Play PS Plus collection. Yeah, or all the I mean, PS Now. I don't know. One of them. At this point, though, the games are so old, I probably <laughs> wouldn't bother because it's like my list of things to do is already like just massive as is. And then obviously, as like the newer games come out, it's like I'm going to be moving on to them as well. So it's like I don't really have the time at this point to go back to Persona. Yeah. So that's probably me and them games done permanently, I'd say. But uh, speaking of games being done permanently, how about we move on to uh, the next topic? A very, uh, a very anticipated game has failed miserably. <laughs> they have I an would, understatement. I would just like to uh, take this moment to, t- uh, to say I told you so. I knew it was how, how much was it? How much was it? $63 million lost. Because obviously, Avengers failed miserably for Square Enix. It did okay on launch, and now there's a fraction of the player base remaining, basically. No one's playing it anymore. No. Um, I know for a fact, trying to find online games is impossible, because not enough people are playing it. Mm. Uh, I played it. I enjoyed it for about 20 (laughs) minutes, and then everything just felt the same. Everything was just the same. It was a different mission, yeah, but it felt the exact same as a previous one. It was all copy and paste from a prior mission to the next. Well, that's the thing. It's like, when they first showed the trailer, one of the first things I set up on seeing it was, they can't release this. It's not ready. It's like See, the trailer oh, sold me. Nice. The trailer sold me. I liked the trailer I did. I was going to say, um, me go and go for a... Go on. Uh, no, I was just going to say, me and you had a big back and forth when the trailer actually dropped, didn't we? Because it was during the... Um, was it the PS5 announcement? No, it was before Maybe. they wanted it. It, was, it might have been E3 last year. Yeah, yeah, I think it was actually. Yeah, E3. Um, but I like the way they were going with it, just from the trailer anyway. Uh, they're not going to be the same looking characters from the movies, the comics. It's going to be fresh, new. You're not going to have seen these before. The outfit's going to be the same because it's still the same heroes, but then the final product came out, and 20 minutes later, I was bored. Yeah, see, that, that, I wouldn't have thought you of all people, because, I mean, you're probably the biggest, like, Marvel buff I know. I thought I was going to geek the shit out over that game. Mm. And, like I say, 15, 20 minutes, I did, but not massively, anyway. It was just a disappointment. Was it just because of the repetitiveness? Like, you're constantly doing the same thing, or was it the story, or what? It's, what was it's, it? That- the story being repetitive like defeats the purpose of having a story there because you're just doing the same thing. You're you're going out to get something to bring it back to craft a suit. You're doing the same thing for something else. You're just going out and fetching something and bringing it back. That's it. No, That's what you fetch game. Yeah. yeah. That's what I say. It sounds like a game basically that is nothing but fetch quests. Yeah. Yeah. But um, here's the thing though. You're on about it being repetitive. Do you not find Spider-Man also repetitive? You're swinging around fighting the same bad guy, copy and paste. They do it well, though. They do it well. Um, for someone like me to be able to say that Spider-Man I can play and play, but Avengers I got bored of in 20 minutes, should speak enough volumes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does. not <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like pretty much the entire playbase for Avengers has just disappeared off the face of the earth. And do you know what Square Enix's uh, solution is? DLC. Yep. It's like, they're not going to patch the game, they're not going to fix it, they're just going to pump out more DLC that costs... I honestly is should it... have been disappointed from the get-go when it was Square Enix. Is it free DLC? No. Then what's the point? People aren't going to pay for it when they don't enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. No. You need to make it free for people to come back. Yeah. I mean, to be fair though, well, you just said you should have expected it from Square Enix. Um, yeah. They do have some good games. I think they it depends on... Games who is working the project. Um, I mean, to be fair, they haven't had many good Final Fantasies since uh, the merger with Square Enix. Because it used to be Square Soft, and Enix was like a different company entirely. Then they merged together. Um, that was after, I want to say Final Fantasy X, or it was after Final Fantasy X too. Um, but since then, like the quality of the games did drop quite a lot. Um, but they do still have, like, a few of the old good devs that are starting to move up in position now and, like, get their own projects, which is starting to bring some life back into um, the company. I'll tell you what, if Insomniac did that Avengers game, it'd be a different story. I mean, I do like Insomniac. Insomniac do make some really good games because they make the Ratchet & Clank games, so I'm, I'm happy with them. 
And the Spider-Man game, so I'm happy with them. <laughs> Who made Spider-Man before Insomniac? Warner Brothers, wasn't it? No, that was Batman. No, wasn't it? They were just a license, so weren't they? Uh, um, wasn't wasn't. I'm being stupid and thinking Naughty Dog, right? Wasn't Naughty Dog? No, Naughty Dog was Crash and Jack and Dexter and yeah. Uncharted. But I can't think of any big ones before. He's gone great with Spider-Man now, aren't he, I think, or something. <laughs> yeah, but I've got like, the PS1 and the PS2 version. Yeah, yeah. It's not always been Insomniac, has it? I, I don't know. Like, it might have been. He's looking for the old, <laughs> old Spider-Man <laughs> games. <laughs> have you actually got, like, PS1 and PS2 games on your shelf there? Activision. Activision. Activision that makes sense. Spider-Man. That makes, that makes sense, actually, yeah. I've got Spider-Man 2 and 3. But yeah, Activision. Hmm. Back when Activision actually made ga- uh, good games. Those were good games, those ones. Yeah, yeah. before they took over COD. They started COD. Did, did, did they? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then how did they do well with Spider-Man and shit with COD? Um, I don't really think they always did shit on COD. Um, I think the problem now lies as they pump it out every year. That yeah, back in fo- the day. They're focusing too much on keeping the uh, <coughs> like I want to say terrible players but that's probably going to hurt some feelings um, so the terrible <laughs> players um, they want to keep them constantly playing so that they spend more money on like the battle passes and things like that which is yeah, just but that doesn't even happen no. I mean it does but I, I don't know whether I'm an exception or not but I don't spend money on the battle pass on COD I don't enjoy the online player aspect of it at all anymore. I play it for the story. I rent it to play the story and send it back. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, like, I like playing the multiplayer when I'm with a group of friends and that, like you and James. Now, if all three of us jumped on, I would, you know, I'd, I'd have some fun. I'd have a blast playing it there. But we can't do that on, like, this card or last year's Modern Warfare because of skill-based matchmaking. Because, I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, this is going to sound really big added, but with my we got enough. into this on one of the last with podcasts. my skills against you guys with my no, techers like, <laughs> with my average score per game, I should say it's going to yeah, put you, you two or like in a very very unfair situation because it's basically putting you guys against like six or twelve of me essentially. Where, I, I don't well, know. I mean, even you struggled in those games. It honestly wouldn't yeah. even matter to me, to be honest with you, because I don't play Call of Duty online on my own anyway. If a couple of people who I'm playing with, if I can have a bit of fun, fine. I'm not there for the com- competitive well, side, obviously. No, yeah, no, no. See, that, that's like. So, right, you're on about having fun. Let's say you were playing with me and James, but you were in a lobby where you were just constantly dying the second you spawn. Would you oh, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll still rage. I'll, yeah. I'll still be like, this game's shit. <laughs> but that, that's what I mean. It's like, you'll have some games where you can do okay, but then the next game is just so dirtily sweaty that even I get my ass handed to me. So it's like, that's what it's become now, though, as well. It's COD pretty much just become a sweat fest now. The only people yeah. who buy them, I think there's only two types of players now so, sweaties and casual players. And right. casual players don't end up playing them for long. Here's the thing. COD has always been that way, but because it never had like any sort of skill-based matchmaking, you didn't really come up against them that often. You occasionally came up against like a team of six proper tri-cards, um, but the majority of the time, you were just up against anybody who's been queuing at that point in time. Whereas now, it's like you're essentially playing ELG finals, you know, or EGL finals pretty much every game. I mean, this yeah. card, I, I, as much as it's annoying with the um, match be- uh, matchmaking, but I find that if you are in the lower tier ones, it's just full on camping. And if you're in the higher tier ones, you're just dying every two seconds. Yeah, it's a full we, on there's not like a mid. Yeah, there's no like mid. How did we quickly drift away from Square Enix to COD? Uh, we went to Activision from Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I mean. I really hope multiplayer games change. It's like, if I play a multiplayer game, I want to have fun with friends, you know? It's like, I don't want to have to try, in a sense. Like, I actually just want to mess around, have a laugh, maybe have a drink, you know? 
and just have, yeah. a, have a good night, essentially. It's like, if I want to play in some tournament finals, I'll go and register for game battles or whatever's taken over for that, if that's shut down now. Yeah. So. But this is where I, I still say that most games should have a ranked playlist and an unranked. Here's the thing, though. Like, they are on about bringing a ranked playlist, but is it going to matter? I think so, because if, if these trio ha- tryhards are really tryharding, then they want to have a good rank, so they're going to be in ranked. Yeah, but what I mean is, like... The Wouldn't people just be able to jump in casual? Because ranked puts you up against people of your same skill rank. So Wouldn't people like... just be able to jump in casual to build up their MMR? No, because that has skill-based matchmaking built into it. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're on about. Like, there is no casual and no ranked at the moment. It's all combined into one. So it's like... If you can, right, if you get above a 1KD, just a 1KD, so you get like 24 to 24, you're going to get a game against the sweatiest motherfuckers alive, and then you're just going to go like 0 to 30. Yeah, but then I'll get a game against the shittiest people alive. Who camp constantly, so yeah. good luck. <laughs> okay. it's like, and this is why I don't play COD. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like my average score each game is either like right down here, or then right up here, and then the next one, it'll be down here again. Like, it's just a constant up and down like that. There's no, like, I'll have a couple of good games and then a couple of bad games. It's just one good followed by one immediately fucking disastrous game. Yeah. Which, I mean, it does get boring as hell, to be fair. Anyway, we should uh, we should probably move on. And, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm getting kind of hungry. I feel like having a four hundred and fifty pound bag of rice. Thank God he put a G in that word. <laughs> I honestly thought she was going to say, "I'm getting kind of horny." <laughs> I mean, if I had a four hundred and fifty pound oh, bag of rice coming, I might do. <laughs> but, uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is. I, I can't help but laugh at this one, honestly. So, uh, James, you recently had a delivery from Game because you're a you're a dirty hacker and you hacked the website. I didn't have the website, so just so everyone knows, but yeah. Oh, well, I did, but I didn't. But so yes, I got did. a delivery. <laughs> yeah, so you basically managed to order a PS5 like two days before they were available, right? Yeah, when no one had it in stock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, did, what did you have delivered? I had a PS5 delivered. Right, okay. That, that's, that's good news. Congratulations. That's what you should have delivered. Yeah. yeah. Not cat food, not rice. There are literally thousands of people... They are posting online. They are getting bags of rice, cat food, dog food, cat litter, and all of that delivered instead of the PS5 they ordered. I mean, even the brilliant Nerf guns, thing, the cookers. Real, even Nerf guns and cookers. What? Yeah, as in like you know those little frying cooker things. Yeah. I mean, the, like... the brilliant thing about this is all the uh, all the people that wanted to own a PS5 are going to be pissed off, but their pets are going to be over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming they have pets, but yeah. <laughs> oh. I have to admit, though, like, if I actually managed to lock out and ordered a PS5, like, I actually beat the queues and managed to order a PS5. If when it finally got here, I had a bag of rice or a bag of cat litter, dude, I would hit the fucking roof. I'm just going to order a PS5 just so Amazon actually delivered dog food. <laughs> this is where you get cat food instead. I know, yeah. It's a or a Nerf gun. But uh, yeah, so the biggest culprit seems to be Amazon. Yes. Um, obviously, no one knows if it's the drivers or the warehouse. I can't believe this has been happening with actual sellers, legit sellers. I, so I can. just eBay or anything. Like, it's like James just said, though. We don't know if it's the warehouse or the delivery drivers. That you would never get this over the counter. Like, you just go into game, you ask for a PS5. It's like, well, he's no, a big bag of But that's the thing. Because they're so rare and hard to get hold of, it sounds wrong, but I don't blame them for doing what they can to try and get hold of one. It's 100% wrong, what they've done, but I can see why it happened. I, I, it I didn't expect be, it, but I'm not surprised. Wouldn't, wouldn't it just be more convenient for everybody to refund the money if they can't get them one, rather than giving them a £400 bag of no, cat food? It's, it's no, not the company that's right. doing it, it's the workers. Yeah, so what it is, it's like the people who packed our order are so, essentially taking the console and replacing it with a bag of rice. So are yeah. people managing to get refunds from this at all? Or? Uh, I don't know. Um, so there's I think two... somebody was offered a £5 gift voucher for it. No, so there's two <laughs> things that they've done. They, so some of them, some of the people, they've told them to wait an extra 48 hours just in case it does turn up. And the others have got a £5 voucher 
to say sorry. Five fucking pounds. That's not a sorry. That is a big fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm assuming they'll get refunds because obviously there's no I more mean, consoles. They, they can't. They have to get refunds at that. But they've got to be very careful because, if, for instance, if I read about it or whatever, I could turn around and say oh, I've received a bag of rice and keep my mm. PS5 and get a refund. Potentially get a new one. It's yeah. going to be very hard, yeah. It is going to be one of those things that's definitely tricky to prove. I think the initial 6 to 12 hours of deliveries, it's probably going to be a legit thing. After that, people have probably seen it online and be like, mm, I'm going to try this, see if I can get my money back as well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like Warstrife's just said. Um, there's been a lot of reports of delivery drivers parking up by the houses, sitting there for mm. 10 minutes and then driving off, and you'll get a notification to say it's been delivered. Yeah. And there was there was a guy that actually chased after the driver and made him go into the van and grab it. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, I, I've not actually seen that one, but that would be hilarious. But he posted is, on that, Twitter. That's not new just for the PS5, though. Like That has happened a fair few times with delivery drivers. Here's my question, though. How do they know what's in the box like a delivery driver should not know what is in the package i mean there's two ways i mean look at the size of the box you know what's been released today or the day after yeah i'll give you that and they just tear the corner of the box don't they to have a quick look in it i, I saw the one that chased after the driver actually his box was torn in the corner so they could see what was in it so you know not to mention if you just swap a roll of that amazon tape you could just open the fucker up well, that's the thing. They weren't coming back with... So the ones that got delivered that weren't the proper thing inside, they had clear tape. It wasn't Amazon. Oh, tape. so they'd had... So they had, they'd had been reopened, yeah, and then reclosed. Not not always, not always. So here's the thing. Um, I used to work for a company that did actually sell through Amazon and that. Um, there are two ways that selling through Amazon goes. You can essentially send your stock to Amazon and they'll pack it and dispatch it and all that for you where they take a fee. Other than that, they can order where the order comes through to, like, your own warehouse and that, and you do pack it yourself. Um, you can get the, like, official Amazon boxes and that, um, but they don't send you any tape, essentially. So it's like no, so we were sending things out in Amazon boxes, but we only had normal clear tape to go on it. Or yeah, but we're talking about tape. but we're talking about PS5s. That's going to be a different thing. This will come straight from the warehouse. And the bottom box will have the Amazon seller tape, but the top half of the box would have clear tape. Okay, yeah, that's definitely uh, that's definitely dodgy then. If it's like the two different tapes, if it's only the yeah. one tape, I can understand. But Moon said the five pound gift voucher is for the bowl to put your cat food in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tell you what, though, like it's not even like it's some sort of luxury cat food or dog food. It's just your uh, box Felix. standard stuff. Felix is Felix. good. I mean, Felix isn't the only one. Like, I saw one that was, like, some proper cheap, low-grade one. Like, just I mean, you would be pissed if you paid 450 quid and you got some Tesco value cat food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, though. This just makes me glad of one thing. Even after I was... Well, I did an all-nighter, essentially, to try and get uh, a PS5 on, uh, on release. Um, I was trying for about six to seven hours. Like, just trying everywhere Corey's, argos john lewis and all that i managed to get in the baskets a few times i actually got to the checkout stage for john lewis just about to enter my payment in before um, the website crashed and they'd sold out and that um but essentially i'm really really glad that i was not able to order one i was only able to reserve one because now when tesco get that uh, well when tesco basically email me I don't have to wait for a delivery or anything like that, so I know I'm not getting a bag of rice. I can just go up and collect it uh, when I'm allowed, essentially. But it's like, it's one of those things that you just do not expect to happen. And on this no. level of scale, it's like, I don't think it's a case of people are taking them for themselves. I think they're taking them to resell. Scalpers? No, not scalpers. Because, uh, I mean, <coughs> scalping is just like where you do it online with bots and shit. Well, yeah, no, but that but... wouldn't surprise me if that happened either. If people just happened to complain that they got cat food or dog food in hopes to get a PlayStation actually sent out, stockpile the ones, and then sell them one for like 15, 100 quid. Yeah, I mean, even CEX are terrible for this. Have you seen that they're offering, I think, £600 for a PS5 and then sell it for 750 So people will just buy one, sell it to them to gain a couple of extra quid yeah. and so on. I'll it's... tell you what, though. I, I think it was walmart that did this but it made me laugh it was either walmart or curry's 
Um, they basically made a, a post saying, sorry everybody, the PS5's now out of stock, but the PS4's on offer. Do you want to go and have a look at that? <laughs> yeah, it's I just saw like, that. What the fuck? That was like, brilliant. It, it's ancient at this point. People want a PS5. They don't want a PS4. Like, who That's is going to buy a PS4? Trolling. That's just Walmart trolling. It's brilliant. There's a lot of people that probably don't have one, so I, I think it's good to try to get rid of your old stock. Yeah, but I mean, when people are so pissed off about not being able to get a PS5, you don't well, poke yeah. the hornet's nest like that. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it, I did. I enjoyed seeing I, I, that. I'll agree with you. It was funny when it happened. Like, I laughed at it. But at the same time, like, you, d- you don't want to poke that hornet's nest, especially with the online culture these days. It's, it's like, also Twitter, though, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's known for all of that. Pretty much, yeah. But it's like, I'm just, I'm amazed at how little stock there actually was for the console. It's like when I was trying to get one on Curry's, there, were, uh, there was over 170,000 people looking at that item, waiting to get one. Obviously, there's going to be a few bots in there. There's going to be a few people with multiple tabs open. That's still a lot of fucking people. Do you remember, do you remember when uh, I said in a previous podcast that I was like, Oh, I'm happy I'm waiting a year because I'm not going to have to handle any of this shit. <laughs> I'm now jealous for everyone I'm seeing open a PS5. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what? So what? what's making you jealous then? I mean, so I know I, shouldn't, I know I shouldn't own one yet because there's going to be bugs and shit. You need updates and stuff. And it'll make sense to wait until next year. It's just, it's the next gen and they've got the hands on it and I'm just a little jelly. <laughs> so... Uh... <laughs> This wasn't in the, the list of topics, but you just mentioned bugs and glitches. Mm. James, do you want to explain uh, how your past couple of days was with your lovely new PS5? Oh, how did it go? So, I tried out the whole external... Um, so, with your PS4 games, it's not good to have it on the actual uh, SSD in the PS5. So, I plugged in an external one there, and I installed two PS4 games onto it which was The Last of Us and Fall Guys, just to test them out, to see what the loading times were, to see if, it, if there were any loading times. Anyway, I played a lot of Last of Us, and I didn't see a single loading screen, which was great. Um, and then a couple of hours later, I thought, you know what, I'll try Fall Guys. And I loaded it up, and the PS5 just crashed. Oh, completely shit. turned off. And I was like, crap, I haven't just like completely broke it, have I? Um, I had to do like a hard reset on it. And it told me that it crashed. It had to rebuild the database, and then it was just a black screen. Nothing on something that. like Fall Guys as well. Yeah, um, that's right. The story's not done yet. So I had to unplug the external hard drive because I was assuming that was causing the problem. Turn it off again, and then back on. So anyway, it came back on, and I checked my storage. And you know how you've got like your games and apps, your media, and so on, and then at the bottom you got <clears> other, <throat> which you can't do anything with. It's, it went from about 20 gigs to 160 gigs that was being used. So I lost out on 160 gigs of my hard drive, well, my SSD, for nothing. How? I have no idea. The only way that I could fi- uh, figure out sorting it out is this morning I just reset the whole PS5 and it sorted itself out and got rid of that other memory. But I have no idea what caused it to do that. And there's no way to delete the memory that's in the other. So I did every step that I could find online that people uh, suggested. It didn't do it. I still had 160 gigs that was stuck in my other. I mean, we all pretty much know that Fall Guys into 160 gig game, right? <laughs> I mean, even no. if you combine it with Last of Us, that's not 160 gig. That's mental. But you got, you got was... that space back now. Yeah, had but I had to reset, reset the whole PS5. So I've lost like everything I had on it, so I'm having to re-download everything and stuff. But Not the end of the world, but it was really irritating at the time and frustrating because have you the tried... hard drive isn't particularly big to begin with. Have you tried out Fall Guys since? No, recently? I'm not touching it. No, no. Just to see if it happens again. <laughs> I mean, no, let's I probably be honest, will. If it happens again to him, it'll probably just completely kill his system entirely. No, I'm going to try it. It's, it's got a warranty. It's fine. I mean, it's got a warranty. <laughs> but does any place have any replacement PS5s in stock? Sony, I'd have to sort something out. <laughs> just send him a PS4. <laughs> yeah, it's like the PS4s it's, are on offer got, now, dude. There's plenty it's got of stock Walmart available. Warranty. Walmart warranty. So they'll send him a PS4 and a PS1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you've, you've got all, five. They'll send him a PS2 though. taped to a PS3. <laughs> in all fairness, for that to be my only issue so far, I'm not too bothered. And it's not like it was game-breaking. I mean, in fairness, you've had it 24 hours and you've already had an issue like that. Well, I mean, I've had it 48 hours or... How long? Uh, yeah. You got, it came on the no, 20th. Yesterday morning. 
No, 20th. Yeah. Fair enough. If way, though, that's not a long time. Because, I mean, you had the issue within the first 24 hours then. Yeah, but I think it was the issue with the external hard drive. I think the hard drive is breaking anyway, so I'm blaming the external hard drive, not the PS5. Mm. But the PS5 just completely went apeshit after the external did whatever it was it did. Um, and therefore, the PS5 is at fault. But it's the only issue I've had. I've not had any other issues whatsoever. So, yeah. Sam, can you imagine how unlucky I'd be if I managed to get a PS5? <laughs> You'd be the one to get the fucking bag of rice. <laughs> Um, I should probably comment, um, AE3000K is just mentioned in the comments, uh, might want to get a new SSD. Um, you cannot replace the original SSD in a PS5. It's hard soldered to the motherboard. So it's like, if that SSD does actually die, you can't do anything with it. You can't just change it out. You would have to change the PS5 itself, basically. Or change the entire motherboard. It's like, you can't just unplug it and plug a new one in like you can on every other console. <clears throat> and obviously we all know um, the extra M.2 drive the PS5 has uh, doesn't work because Sony are basically saying, no, y you can't use that yet. Not ready yet. Yeah, it's like the, the, the hardware's there, you know, I mean, we know it's going to work because, I mean, the storage on the console. The thing is, this works, is happening but... more and more frequent. This is. this is happening more and more frequent with next new new gen consoles where they're just not ready on launch. They're just not finished. I see. I don't actually know what a lot of the problems with the PS5 are. It's like I have seen a lot of reports of problems. Like there's a really weird noise coming from um, around the disk drive and that. Um, there's obviously the storage issue and the randomly missing 200 gig of storage, which is which we still don't have an answer for. Yeah, it's like Sony have just completely gone silent on that. But I mean, from a normal technological standpoint. There's no point. There's like, there's no way that should be missing, basically. Well, we it's all assumed gone. that that was for the system to be able to run everything fast and so on and so forth, wasn't it? But apparently, that's what the other storage is for. Wait, because when you click on that, on, on, if you remember on that leaked um, image we saw that showed the storage initially, that did have a system bar. Is that not there now? No. Okay, so maybe over it is actually like updates and system stuff then. No, so when you click on the other, it tells you that it's basically for the system to reserve some memory for it to be able to do everything as quickly as it needs to and stuff like that. Um, which is why the more games you install, for instance, the bigger that other memory will get. Yeah, so it's essentially using it as a cache then, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what... I, I assume that's what the 200 gigs was doing. So what the hell can that be doing if it's not even doing that? That's what I mean. It's like, it's way more than you would ever need for... Just like the way storage is calculated. Obviously, if you buy a terabyte hard drive, you're not actually getting a terabyte just because of the way like bits and that are calculated. Um, 200 gig is way too much for that. So it's not even just the normal overhead that you're missing. It's just a straight up disappeared 200 gig. Hmm. But Sony are advertising it as a, an 825 gig hard drive. Obviously, the PS5 has now released worldwide, normally. Um, so I suspect over the next couple of days, we're going to start getting proper, proper teardowns from like the big tech channels that are actually going to be running all these tests on them and things like that. Um, I've already seen some tests done for like thermal performance and that. And that's actually going pretty damn well, to be fair. Like, I don't think we're going to have a problem like with the PS4 just becoming a bloody inferno in a jet engine, which is a benefit, and at least you can't cook an egg like on the Xbox. But we just have every other problem under the sun instead. Which, honestly, is definitely a shame, because, I mean, I I know I said this in the last podcast, like, me being a PC gamer now, it has dampened my excitement for next-gen consoles, but at the same time, I still want them to work, you know? Yeah, I mean, of course. I'm the opposite. So when it arrived, I even said to you, I don't even feel like opening it at the moment and stuff. Mm. Um, but you convinced me to, so I did. And after I'd opened it, I fell in love with it. Whereas before, when it had just arrived, it was like, oh, I don't so, even know if I really want it. Mm. So, we, we, uh, in terms of the design and what everyone thought of that, is it the same way you felt before you actually had the PlayStation there? No, so when you look at the design without it, like when you're looking online, it doesn't feel as, like it, it looks a bit bulky and this, that and the other. When it's in your hands, it doesn't actually seem so bad. Yeah. It is still huge. Yeah. Um, 
I tried to put it on top of my PS4 Pro, and then it was it could barely fit. So PS4 it... Pro turned into a slim. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there, there was just not enough space, so I had to put it on a shelf on its own. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it looks okay. I don't think it looks fancy. Um, I think maybe if it stood up, maybe it'll look better. Mm. It, it does. It just looks like a DVD drive. Like, with the size of it, would you be comfortable standing it up? Obviously, I know it comes with a base, and you can screw it into the base. But I imagine it's still going to be pretty easy to, like, knock over, especially if it's, like, somewhere you walk by off. Bear in mind, that base, yet it clips onto the back, but it's just a plastic base. Mm. Yeah, but I would feel better if it was stood up. So, yeah. obviously, when you lay it down, the way the base clips onto it, because it's a very heavy console, it's not really clipped on. It's just sort of um, I, I assume holding itself from its weight. If you yeah, I, I'm assuming the PlayStation is using its weight to keep itself stable in the yeah. stand. So it, it could eventually sort of slide off, you never know. Whereas if, yeah. it, if it stood up, at least it's screwed in. Well, so I would that, feel better that way. What's the stand actually like? Is it just like a cheap, flimsy plastic thing, or is it actually decent? It's a cheap, flimsy plastic thing. I, I, I thought I broke it when I first... Uh, Seriously? Took it <laughs> out, yeah. I was messing with it, and like, there's a bit that raises and goes down. So if you've got it... In the back? No, no, no. So is that where it's the screw like it, goes? it's above the screw. So if you're having it laying down, it comes up to sort of like keep it flat. Whereas if you're going to have it up, it's just flat because obviously the bottom's flat. Now that little bit is very flimsy. It's like I don't know how to explain it, but mm. it it does feel like you'll very easily break it. Okay, so it sounds like we're probably going to get some third party stands then, like some more yeah, hundred percent ones. Yeah. I, d I don't think the stand is bad. It does its job, but... I've, I've already seen I some on Amazon, by the way. Third-party stands for the PS5 with yeah. built-in fans and stuff already. Here's the question, though. Have you it's... seen any uh, custom backplates? Yes, there's still, there's still people uh, making them. Mm. It's like people are doing their own. They're taking them off and just painting them. It was like, this was bound to happen. The moment Sony said, like, yeah, you, you can't sell them, people were just like, okay, own. I'll just make my own. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm because lazy, bear in mind, you're spending, what, £500 on this console. Who knows how much they're going to sell custom plates for? Well, here's the thing, like, this is why I think Sony shut the custom plates down, because they want to do their own. It's also why I think that the um, XRM.2 <clears throat> drive is not working, because Sony wants to get their own storage out for it. I reckon they're going to update it as soon as they themselves release a drive for it. Yeah. It's like I think Sony's definitely getting a bit too greedy now, and it's gonna it's gonna bite them in the foot. Like it does on, feel that way. On a business point, like I can totally understand the way they're doing it. It's like they obviously want to get their own sales in there, and it's like if the M.2 drive was working straight from the get go, people would just go out and buy Samsung NVMe drives. Whereas if they wait, then yeah, they can get their own sales, but at the same time, it's pissing the fan base off. Um, but the the thing with the custom faceplates, if you ask me, is ridiculous ridiculous it's like yeah i mean you can make your own but at the same time you cannot stop people just doing their own so it's like no. you literally just shot yourself in the foot and it's like yeah you went after a website selling them early you can't go the after is, a website selling them now i've seen people doing their own but i've not seen anything that makes me go wow you can sell these i don't know the spider-man one was good yeah but that was just concept image yeah, it's like, you, you definitely can't sell, like, a Spider-Man faceplate, because, I mean, that'd be copyrighted to hell. That was just a concept image from what I saw. When it comes no, no, to no, the actually... guy made it. Did he? Yeah, did I link the video for it? He, there was a video of him making it. So he painted it and then made a sticker for it and put that on there. And oh, stuff. no, I've only I've only seen the concept image of uh, the Spider-Man one. Oh, okay, like... I, linked it, I did link it about two, three weeks ago. The thing is, uh... it's like, if people are making their own faceplates, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> If they wanted to sell things with, like, Spider-Man, X-Men, Avengers, you know, whatever, like, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a legal issue. Um, but at the same Not time... Not on Facebook, it won't. Not on Facebook, it won't. <laughs> I mean, you're still technically earning a profit from copyrighted material. Yeah, but people are more likely to buy, what, 15, 20 pound plates than they are 30 to 35, maybe 40 pound plates that Sony exclusives are going to be. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying people wouldn't go for the cheaper option. All I'm saying is they might also go after the cheaper option. Because mm. it's like, if you were just selling like normal plates in different colours, like maybe you had a red one, a black one, a blue one, a purple one, they can't do anything about that. 
once you start putting like brand yeah on it, once so. you start putting an actual branded or copyrighted image on it that's when it becomes sketchy i wonder if that's the that, that's the year that we're going to have in 2021 the year of fake plates it's like you got people with like fake gucci plates on the playstation or something <laughs> just make your own it's like they just pop off so why not yeah it's like buy like i don't know three four pound kind of black spray paint red spray paint whatever like spray it in one color just print out like a design that you want on it on some sketching paper and then just sketch it on and paint it yourself by the way james the console that you got is it white or black why? Why? Because I, I I read a while ago that there was a black one that was coming. So I think that was for that's, digital. That's a rumor on the uh, the black console. But have you seen how a lot of people are spraying their sides black? No. It looks amazing. Way better than the white. Nah, that would look crap. I don't know, dude. Like, you should absolutely see it. It looks amazing. That confuses me, though, because a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, it's not just a black box anymore, and then they're painting it and turning yeah. it into a black box. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, when you look at it with the blue light on the corner and that, it does look really, really nice. Whereas with Can... it being, like, blue, white, and then the black middle, it's I think it'd like... be cool if that light in the middle I like it programmable. Really. Yeah, but you haven't seen the black picture that I'm on about, James. So no, you no. might change your mind when you see that. So I, I wanted really to... Nice. Like, obviously, we, I just said about the digital one, which reminded me. Have you seen what Sony has done with a lot of digital pre-orders? No. They've sent in the disc version. Wait, what? Okay, that's not terrible. That's, that's a great That's more thing. value for your money. So a lot of people yeah, okay. pre-ordered the digital, and they actually got the disc they spent version. spent about 380 up. quid or something, got a 500-pound console. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of them. Okay, what about the people who pre-ordered the disc version and got digital then? Because surely... Now, this is where I'm... Use. This is where... I, well, no, I don't think anyone got it in reverse. I just think that maybe they had more disc versions than they thought or whatever, so they just helped a lot of people out. But those that got the digital version and got the digital version... I'd be peed off if I was one of them. Oh yeah, yeah. but I'd hang on. The roof. Yeah, I'm sorry, but he ordered the same as me, and he's got that. I want that. <laughs> but I think it's a good thing, but it's See, also the, a bad thing. Like I agree with you, but at the same time, it's so self entitled to admit that. Because it's admit like, what? well, you essentially what? got what you paid for, right? Yeah. Whereas because some guy also paid the same, but he got something else, it's like. I don't know, it's, it's sort of going like... Oh, uh, oh yeah, it's, cut, it, mode. it's like... It's jealousy all over, yeah. but that, that is what feelings are at the moment. After yeah, I know, but it's year. like, if you were just like constantly badgering Sony, like, no, he paid for the same as me and he got that. I won't get you anywhere, too. by the way. Like, don't that do that. That is so self-entitled. <laughs> don't go emailing Sony's like, well, he got this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unfair. No, <laughs> Could but... you imagine if someone did that and it worked? I'm, Sony was just like, oh, I'm sorry, sir, here's your new PS5. <laughs> it is kind of unfair. It's like, for instance, for me, I, I, I spent 450 I could have spent 350 and got the same thing. So give me my £100 back. Mm. Like, it, it's it's a good thing to do, but a lot of people are going to be a bit butthurt about it. Yeah. But I, I think it's great. I'm happy to have spent what I spent and other people got what I got for the less money. Mm. I think yeah, it's good that to do. Especially, <laughs> I think especially given the year that we've had, to be fair. Because it's like, there's going to be a lot of people who want the console who just generally yeah. can't afford it because of lack of work this year. But I don't think it was on purpose. I definitely think that's a big scroll because each wrong console they sent out, how many times quid they lost. It depends, though. How many times has that happened? Quite a few. I don't know exact numbers or anything, but there were a lot of people posting um, on Twitter and stuff about it. There was some reports on it on the news thingies. Yeah, and it's like I said, I mean, each one of those consoles is a hundred quid loss for Sony. I don't think they would do that intentionally, even if they wanted to be nice. True. Well, I don't know, because Sony replied to some of them. Imagine if it was the disc version that they'd been giving them when they bought the digital, but it was actually a broken disc drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that. Um, there Here's are, the equivalent. There are actually a lot of reports of strange noises coming from disc drives in the PS5. Like, I haven't... So I've seen a few videos where it's kind of loud when it's booting up a game, but once it's in the game and it's settled down, it's fine. I haven't actually seen any videos of it. I've only 
like read a bunch of articles and reports and that but essentially there's like a really weird rattling noise coming from the disk drive almost like there's a screw loose in there or something and it's just like rattling around in the disk drive itself because uh, james i asked you yesterday if you've actually heard any weird noises from your disk drive didn't i yeah so i've not like, heard any but i've also not put a disk in there if that matters maybe because all the games i've got a digital at the moment hmm. and you bought the disk with <laughs> yeah, I plan on getting discs, I just don't have any yet. He just I didn't doesn't know what games he wants to buy. I didn't realise I'd end up with the console, so I didn't buy anything, you know, to prepare for Because you were very meh on getting the console originally, weren't you? You were like, should I, shouldn't I? It's like, I don't really know what to do. It's only because I got lucky with some weird-ass hack on the website. Because he had the website, yeah. That's yeah, another like... thing, though. Did you Did you just get the console straight out, console, or did you get, like, the headphones just the, the, the camera just the console. I've, I've got i've got two controllers obviously because i got a controller beforehand but mm. yeah just the control uh just the console hmm. i right, i'm sorry to interrupt but um i need to respond to ign reviewer here apparently i am really handsome thank you i agree i am absolutely <laughs> goddamn gorgeous ign reviewer are you drunk <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, so... You, with... you hardly ever respond to anybody in the chat. Of course you respond to I that. Of course you respond to that. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. I, I'm gorgeous. Like, what do you expect? It's like people Jesus. are finally noticing. This is where they say, oh, yeah, I was talking to James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I tell you what, I think one thing we probably should touch on, though, is just the general fiasco of the actual launch. Like, we all knew shops were going to have some stock in available for launch day. And once again, as soon as they went live, if they went live, bot scalpers just took them all almost instantly. It's like, as I mentioned earlier, I was up all night to try and get, uh, well, try and get one. The websites were going down a good 10 to 15 minutes before, like, the stock was even announced to go on. So it's like, I think Corey's was supposed to be having their stock on at 8 a.m. Nine. Um, was but it nine? people were buying, yeah, people were buying it at 5 a.m. Yeah, so people were buying early because they could add it to their wish list and then go to their wish list and then add it to the basket and check out. So they were essentially getting around it that way. Um, as I say, there was like 170,000 people on Corey's when I was trying. So the website just completely buckled under pressure. Here's the thing, though. Corries were not honouring all of those orders. Any of them, from what I read. No, there there are some that they have actually um, allowed in that, but they basically said any orders before eight a.m. bar some would not be honoured. All the orders would be cancelled, all purchases would be refunded, and all that, and the stock would be coming back at midday. So I don't know how many they cancelled, if they cancelled any or anything like that. Come midday, I mean, the site was down just like that, basically. Yeah. And From what like, I read, they didn't sell them. No, it was just, it was sold out instantly. Um, John Lewis, I was on there, and I mean, John Lewis was constantly up and down. Um, I managed to get one in my basket, then it was auto deleted. I managed to do that, like, I want to say, like, four or five times on John Lewis before I could actually get into my basket with it still in there. Um, Fought through a bunch of crashes on there for about an hour straight before I could finally get to the last stage of checkout. I was just about to pull my payment details in and the website crashed, they were sold out. Um, Argos, again, managed to get one into my basket. Couldn't do anything with it. Um, Smiths didn't have any from what I saw unless they added to them super late into the day. Uh, game, I mean, game was just completely shut down. You could not get onto game's website. And then when you finally could get onto their website, there was no in stock or anything like that. It was just, boom, instantly out of stock. And that's where a lot of people really went ham on, like, you're letting scalpers buy these consoles. Because, like, there was not enough time for a human to make a purchase, basically. It's like, as soon as the website was up, they were gone. It was like, that is just ridiculous. It's like, you've got to have some anti-scalping measures in place. Like, yeah, I know you don't care who buys the console because you're still getting the money regardless. But it doesn't matter if you stop the scalpers because you're still going to sell out within five minutes. Yeah. It's like, you're still getting your money. 
but maybe make it at least look like you're trying to stop Skyrim. I think I think this is going to go on through next year as well, I do, where people are still going to struggle to get a PS5 and they're going to go for scalpers because they've got like fucking 50 of them. They will do. I mean, it's just going to be until Sony gets the demand. And then me thinking waiting a year was sensible is going to be me paying like fucking £800 on the cheap side from a scalper. <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with that because the Nintendo Switch was almost the same. That wasn't really done by that scalpers. Has though. Now, that has. Yeah, but that has stopped now. Yeah, but that but look how long really, that took. That wasn't really done by scalpers though. That was just because of the demand for the Switch and Nintendo's lack of production on it. So that was what was essentially artificial demand. It's like if Microsoft knew there was a million people who wanted the Switch, they only made like fifty thousand units. <laughs> Because it still it still keeps that demand there. It still keeps everybody talking about like, oh, where can I get a switch? Where has switch stock in that? So it just generates more and more hype and buzz. Like, Mac, like, wait, am I saying Microsoft or Nintendo? Both. Yeah, oh. you keep saying. <laughs> <that. Yeah. laughs> no, so it's like Nintendo can basically just say, oh, like, our Nintendo Switch is super popular. It's always sold out. Well, yeah, because you're not producing enough. I mean, it works both ways. It's like with Sony. I don't think it would be a good idea for them to try and do anything like that because people will just say, you know what, screw them. Yeah, pretty much. If you can't get hold of one, you can't get hold of one. Yeah, it's like people will just go over to the Xbox. It's like I think we're at the point now with both consoles where... uh, In in a year's time, though, we might even see the pro version of the PS5. Yeah. Mm, Maybe not a year. It won't be a year. A year's too soon. A year's probably pushing it, but... I would say at least three for a pro version. Do you reckon? I mean, so do you fairness, reckon then? Is it worth people waiting three years before they get a PS5 for a potential pro coming out? I mean, you're going to miss out on a lot of games. You are going to miss years. out on a lot, but for performance wise, performance wise, there probably wouldn't be much of an increase in a pro version. Mm. No, honestly, I can't think of anything that can impre- increase for this. It's like it's probably just it's gonna lightning be, fast. Yeah, it's probably just going to be a storage increase. <laughs> but at the same time. I mean, they should allow the uh, extra M.2 slot to be working you watch, by then. You watch them drop the Pro, which gives you about the 200 gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, here you go, here's what you originally paid for. We'll just take another £550 from you this time. Yeah. But no, it's the like... only thing I... Do... No, go on, go on. Oh, I was going to say, the only thing that annoyed me, I think, with the releases is, you know, when the Xbox come out, I went onto John Lewis and I was able to put one into the basket. No hassle. You know, I could have brought it. I didn't want to, so I deleted it. But then PS5, you had queues of like thousands on every single website. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't think the demand is that much higher for P- uh, PlayStation. Don't get me wrong, it's higher. I don't think it's that much higher for a 10,000 long queue to get into one website or an Xbox release. I could just pop on there at, you know, quarter past eight and order one. I'm interested to compare the sales of the Xbox and the PlayStation next year, I am. Is it like the quarterly thing that they do? Here's the thing, though. Like, I don't really think it'd be very fair to compare them because of such drastic production values. Like, when you think about it, if Sony only managed to produce a million consoles, but Microsoft managed to produce three million, if Sony sold all million, but Microsoft only sold one and a half million... Microsoft sold more consoles, but is it the more popular no, console? I'm I'm just hoping who, whoever sells the most. I'm hoping the numbers are very very close because all I've heard from PlayStation side and Xbox side is, oh fuck you to the other console. Oh this is why this console shit. This is why this console shit. Oh the fanboys just love PlayStation. All oh, the fanboys just love Xbox. And I, I I'm just I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm just sick and tired of the console wars and. Mm. Just, just get the one that plays the games that you want. That's yeah. all that, like, they're, yeah, they're yeah. essentially the same systems. I've got nothing against Xbox. I'd happily have one. Just I don't know anyone that plays on Xbox, and their exclusives don't really appeal to me. Mm. Mm. I mean, PlayStation wants it. Like, consoles now, there's no... Well, that is also a factor, though, isn't it? That is also a factor that you're going to have to think about before buying a console now. What are your friends playing? Mm. Yeah. But it's always has been, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it always has been. I We're guess. getting more into the... Um, What's the word I'm looking for where you can play cross-platform? So we're getting more into the cross-platform now. So a lot of games could True. have that well, for the online. Do cross-platform so... support party chat? Uh, yeah. 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 Like Call of Duty, you can, yeah. Hmm. There's okay. just one small downside with the cross-play. One side is more than likely going to have some unfair advantages. But yeah, PC. No, I was more <clears> on about all PlayStation benefits. 
like PlayStation. He's on about the PlayStation benefits. Oh, okay, like that. Like on COD. Yeah. And it's like obviously sooner or later Xbox is going to have the same benefits on some other game and that. Like, um, I mean, Battlefield Six, that's uh, being announced for next gen. Well, I say announced. We know it's coming. That's another one I won't be touching. I'm not a Battlefield guy. I like watching it. So I like watching it. I've never really been a Battlefield guy. I mean, James, you used to play it a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I um, love Battlefield. I tried it a couple of times. It wasn't really my cup of tea because I mean, obviously, when I play like shooting games and that, I prefer the snipers, and I don't like the bullet drop on Battlefield. But I love that. Honestly, I don't like it. I think if they brought another one out, um, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna get it. To be fair, just because like I want that. I mean, I know Battlefield isn't really a fast-paced game, so but yeah, I want that action in an FPS again. Like, I'm I'm so <laughs> tired of this COD bullshit with skill-based matchmaking. I just want to jump in a game and I want to run headfirst into people. So you can obviously play the faster-paced modes and stuff, but mm. I prefer like the big, the huge maps and stuff, like uh, playing Conquest Large or whatever it's called. And the bullet drop is amazing because if you hit like a headshot literally across a miles long map, you get, the guy is like a dot and you mm. shoot and you actually manage to get him. You feel so good when you have I to aim imagine, actually, yeah. and take that into consideration as opposed to, you know, just getting your point. Sniper Elite comes to mind when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> With that bullet time. Yeah, I mean, Sniper Elite has one of those take... really cool concepts, to be fair. Yeah. I just don't think they executed it as well. Like, I think they needed to carry on with the games instead of just rushing free out, basically. Because, like, the first, well, the first Sniper Elite was good. The first one was really good because it was so different. Like, that highlight... I think that took on the popularity from the sniping from COD because the first Sniper game was just after World at War on uh, for Call of Duty. Um, so it was still sort of set in that time zone, you know, focused on how many people love sniping. But then, when they saw the popularity of that, they rushed two and three out. I think they should have took more time on the sequels and then kept the franchise going. You know, like if they made a new sniper game now, I would, I'd, I'd buy it like that. But at the same time, like a lot of franchises do that though, don't they? It's like they will see one successful game and then they'll just go sequel, sequel, sequel. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't even say a lot. I'd say all of them nowadays. Mm, well, most of them. A well, I mean, it is, it is a marketing move, really, though, isn't it? It makes sense. It is, because people will buy it, but I mean, if you get a bad impression of that game, are you going to buy the next one? Here's the True. thing, though. It does. Well, people still buy FIFA. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not really a sequel, though, is it? No, but nothing changes. Well, Just an update. People still pay well, for the next like, one. You said it makes sense. It doesn't always make sense. Looks among us. When that blew up, the <clears> first <throat> thing the developers did was say, We're working on Among Us too." And it's like, yep, okay, it good luck with that. You're going to have no fan base in a month, so good luck selling a new game. It's yeah, still extremely really popular. They did take that I back, mean, though, and said it's... that they're just going to improve the first yeah. one, add another map, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like they realized how daft of an idea it was. Because, I mean, James, you just said Among Us is still popular. Yeah. It's still popular, but it's only about 20 to 30k views on Twitch. It's nowhere near the half a million it was getting daily before. Yeah, but yeah, what's it trending on um, Steam? No, it's no longer trendy. No. No. That's but you've got a like... lot of the big streamers that are still playing it, and they've added mics into it now as well, so you, even if you're not playing with friends, you can still speak on mic. That was one of the things they should have had in the base, as far as I'm concerned. It depends, because I always thought it would be a bad idea, but the way that they've implemented it is a good idea, because you can only hear people's mics when you're near them. Otherwise, okay, how, no, how, you can't make anyone mute their mic, can you? So yeah, No, but I think it should have been done in the way that if you're alive... You can talk and hear everybody, but if you're dead, you can only talk and listen to. Well, you can only talk to people who are dead. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way it should have done. Um, a little like um, phasmophobia. Speaking yeah. of phasmophobia, us three recently played that game, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's coming to phasmophobia? A prison map. Like Alcatraz. I don't know if it's going to be like Alcatraz. But I can't wait to just be terrified of this. <laughs> that game shit I mean, me up. To be fair, I think I think the highlight of that was when I made you shit yourself, Al. Well, you could have made you shit yourself. I, just I thought, think like, it was one of you, I think it was. I just went... Yeah. 
So it's like, me and James were both dead. It's like, you were walking around looking for the ghost in that, like, wood cabin place one. And it's like, I'm just there super quiet. And then all of a sudden on Discord, I'm like, Alan, and you fucking shit. Oh, because you were loud? It sounded like the thunder of God. (laughs) Yeah, but you still hit the roof. Tell you what, if if you really want me to shit myself on Phasmophobia, you need to add a carnival map. Just throw a clown at you. Yeah, just throw a clown at me and I'll, I'll shit everywhere. (laughs) <laughs> Here's the thing I don't get, though. You hate clowns, but you love the Joker. Yeah, I'm more out with the Joker and Krusty the Clown. <laughs> but they're both clowns. Yeah, it's weird, okay? It's complex. <laughs> the it's clowns like... I don't like are the friendly ones that are hiding something. Okay, so like if you... it, it, it's birthday parties. Okay, so if it's friendly clowns you don't like, how do you feel about it? Oh, I'm terrified of it. But the the remake is made to look evil. The first one, he's supposed no, he to look. No, he isn't. He looks the same as the first one. He's your average clown. He does not look the same as the first one. The he first one looks look scary. Look the same as the first one. The new one just looks ridiculous. I mean, he looks but, a little like the first one. But I think I think that's why I'm okay with the remake. Uh, the first one is terrifying because he he does almost look like a bog standard birthday clown. I mean, to be fair, though, there was a lot wrong with the first it. Especially because they kept that uh, that child scene in it. Mm. Well, I mean, I won't get into it, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been based 100% off the books, which was disgusting. Yeah, that was... I mean, <laughs> how does something like that actually manage Make to get sold? I, I don't know. So it's like, when you think about, like, the, the author of that should be arrested, for sure. Mm-hmm. So it's like that. So it's allowed in that book, but there's so many other formats where if there was anything like that, it would get shut down instantly. Yeah. It's like, what would your right? What would you say if um, there was a movie coming out and something like that happened in it? You'd hit the roof, wouldn't you? Yeah, but then again, a movie comes to mind of um, "I Spit on Your Grave" from back in the day, which was disgusting. Um. But they kind of made up for it because the girl got her own payback in like gruesome ways. I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can't say I've seen the movie. Is that like a movie based on the revenge for it happening? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I suppose I can slightly understand that in a sense. Anyway, though, we've uh, we've got like just completely uh, sidetracked here. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> we've, we we've gone from that. games to movies. <laughs> How about we combine the two, though? Okay. So, there's a new James Bond game coming. There is. I cannot wait. I, I haven't seen a lot game. about this, but... So, it's meant to be based on the old... It's uh, it's by... Is it, am I right in thinking it's by the same people who made Hitman? Yes. So, yeah. it's... Square Enix? I oh, think God. Square Enix. <laughs> No, I don't think I don't think Square Enix make make Hitman. Chat, chat. Yeah, it's like come on, chat. <laughs> Someone, someone's got the answer here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it is by the developers of Hitman. And honestly, it's like I love James Bond. I like I'll remember back on the original Xbox, me, and Ryan, just oh. constantly playing James Bond. There is Goldeneye back on the Nintendo sixty four as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Was like so many hours playing James Bond games. I think the last one we actually had was like Casino Royale on, I want to say, the PS3. We've not had a James Bond game in a long, long time. So we'll I haven't before. played one since PS1. It was the one with Pierce Bronson. Ooh, um, No Time to Die? No. Uh, it was like a red cover, if I remember correctly. A red cover? Yeah, PS1. I haven't, I haven't played any since then. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow never dies. dies. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. That's what I mean, though. Yeah, I've not played since then. The James Bond games were really fun. <clears throat> then they had one see, bad launch with Casino Royale, and then they just dropped them all. See, I'm a weird one. I don't like the James Bond films, but I like the James Bond games. You don't like James Bond films? No, I did back in the day, but then it just felt the same. <laughs> and then now I'm thinking, why do I like the games if they're all the same? But I get more enjoyment out of the James Bond games than I did. I'm movies. guessing that's because you're actually playing the game, though, instead of actually yeah, probably, like, yeah. just sitting there watching. I mean, I, I can't um, understand that. I, um... I think I was always a Mission Impossible guy of James Bond. 
I mean, Mission Impossible was a good movie. But it's like, I don't know if it would make a good game, though. Because when you think... Like, like, the last Mission Impossible game was good. There was a Mission Impossible game? Yeah, I definitely had one back... I think it, again, was PS1. Hmm. Um, there was definitely a game for it, though. It was either PS1 or PS2. Same with Minority. I loved that game as well. Oh, Minority. That's an old game. Minority Report. Yeah. I played that. That was PS2. The thing is, though, it's like, there are a lot of movies that would make really good games, but then I think they sort of drop the ball on a lot of them. I mean, did any of you guys play the Blade games? Yeah, I didn't like no. them. I played a couple of them. Like them. Yeah, they weren't that good, James. It's like, they didn't really take from the films or anything like that. They sort of had their own unique storylines. Um, and oftentimes it was just sort of... Um, it was like a bland... Like, you know, you go, you fight a bunch of vampires and you're done. Did you ever play the Matrix games on the PS2? I loved the Matrix games. Imagine that, but you're Blade. So it's like you're just going through like a Doesn't small bad, area though. fighting a couple of vampires. Yeah. It's, it's like there was like no on paper. Vampires, on paper, it's great, but the outcome. It's just bad gameplay, good. I guess. Yeah. Mm, pretty much, yeah. I mean, they were. I'm not going to say cheaply made because I don't know how much they cost, but they didn't have a lot of production value in them. So I don't know whether it was like um, an unexperienced studio who made them or something like that because I, I don't even know who made the games. All I can remember was playing Blade 2 on the PS2, and it was shockingly bad. I think I didn't Max, even know they made games, to be fair. Now, Max Payne yeah. in the day was awesome. The films? not the, I've never really played the games. the games. I own one of them, but... I enjoyed the games I did. So, this is where, like, everybody just disowns me now. I've not played the game, and I've not watched the film. You've not watched the film? Well, films. No. Wait, there's more than one? Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was only one film, like th that one in the wasteland, right? Or my there's lots. There's there? there's a couple of old ones, and then they did a remake one. I think like three years ago. Or something. Okay, so I, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking of the remake. Then I didn't even know there was old ones. Watch the remake though. Right? That's really good. It's been one of those that I've had on like my watch list, and I've just sort of been like, I keep putting it off. It's like I have. I mean, obviously, like, I do a shit ton of grinding for, like, my challenge videos and my overpowered videos and that. And when I'm doing that, I will often just watch films or anime. It's like, Max Payne is one of those that's just sort of like, eh, I'll watch it next time. Eh, I'm not really in the mood for this. I think it's, I don't know, like, it's something that I just need to sit down and watch. But at the same time, I have so many shows to watch as well. Like, I still need to watch all the Breaking Bad. I've still not seen that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I could actually make this even I don't, worse. I off. don't know if James will agree here, but make Breaking Bad a priority. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you haven't finished that yet, then you're I way behind. I started that. I mean, I mean I've watched up... that from start to finish probably about four times. Right, so Alan just burst out laughing and almost ended up in tears. James, time for me to make you do the same. I've never watched Game of Thrones. I knew you was going to come out with that. What the fuck? Don't. <laughs> no, yes, do. Don't. You're going to uh, get killed by everyone in this uh, chat, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I know. You I'm need to watch Game it. of Thrones. I'm ready for it. That's um, the thing that's like... I've, I've seen some of Game of Thrones, the first couple of seasons, I think it was, and didn't impress me. You're mad. The ending I mean, shit. The but... same with The Walking Dead. Same with The Walking Dead. I, I can't get behind that. I can't get behind that. I've not seen I mean, any I, of it, so... I, I did get through a few seasons of that, but never. I don't it. know if it's the amount it's hyped up that's just killing it for me. I don't know. Can we just ban this IGN reviewer, please? <laughs> oh, just oh, and watch the watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> Someone else has seen, seen Game of Thrones. See, there's no hate. There's nothing but love. Yeah. Oh, thank God for Moon. Someone has. I'm on no, like, what the fuck's up. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the thing, though. It's like, there are so many TV shows that I'm just like, I'll watch this in the future. And then it just, like, completely falls off the radar for me, and I never get around to it. What I will do, I will say this, when The Walking Dead finally finishes, and for real finishes, not just goes, oh, now it's the final season, a year later, final season, a year later, final season. In fact, that's a good point. Then How many final it. seasons has Walking Dead had? Then... I'll probably give it a go once it's all calmed down. I think hype is killing it too much for me. 
mean, I can see that. Like, I, well, I feel I, like Walking Dead has had like three final seasons now. <laughs> I mean, I do like the idea of Walking Dead. Ooh. I just haven't been able to sit down and watch it though. Someone's just said about Vikings. Please tell me one of you have seen Vikings. Never heard of it. Oh, oh, yeah, no, it's, well, it's on I've Amazon Prime. It. It's amazing. Get ready to be even more pissed off. I've still not seen The Witcher on Netflix. I've not seen that either. Fucking hell, guys. <laughs> what the f- I like how Alan's on the mic list. cut out there. It's on the list. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's even one worse? Sons I'm, of Anarchy, yeah. I'm going to actually... Uh, Sons of Anarchy's good. I'm probably going to make a bunch of the uh, people in chat right now just scream, oh my god. I've never played the games. What, The Witcher games? Yeah. Never like, heard. it's one of the biggest games in RPG, and I've just never touched them. I mean, I own them, but I played about 30 minutes of one of them, and it was just a full cutscene. So by the time I got to actually play, I was bored. Yeah, they're big, big games. Like, they, yeah. to be fair, it is the sort of game I would probably love. Um, I've just, I've never played them. So. What about Sons of Anarchy? Have you seen that? Nope. I've seen a bit of that. I've seen a few episodes, and I like What? what? Okay, yeah, watch it all. That is amazing. I've watched that more than I have Breaking Bad. Here's the thing: is like you guys could name pretty much any show, and I've probably not seen it. Wait, like, Sam, you've seen like this is this is completely different ballpark from like Sons of Anarchy, but you've seen Rick and Morty, right? <laughs> I've seen clips. Of Rick and Morty. <laughs> what? Not even one episode. I've seen clips on Facebook. Do you know what The Simpsons are? <laughs> uh, you ever heard yeah. of the news? That's the guy who goes a thousand years into the future and meets a cyclops, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I, of course, I know what the Simpsons are. I've One seen thing I, um, all the future well, armor as well. To be I've, fair, I've, Sam, we've known each other for a long time, right? Yes. One thing that's always been a constant, and I'll give you this: you're very consistent in this. You're very uncultured when it comes to TV shows. <laughs> 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 what can I say? I do my hardest. <laughs> but no, I mean. As I say, like, I do keep meaning to watch things. I just never get around to actually watching them. And I, I, I don't know what it is. I think it's, um, well, y'all, you, right, you know yourself, Al. I loved watching Arrow, didn't I? Yeah, like, yeah, I got you into the, that. The, you didn't. One of my exes did. Oh, did uh, they? Mm, that play. Well, I say ex. Like, I wasn't actually with her at the time. I started watching this show, so I had something to talk to her about. Then we ended up getting together. Um, this was years ago, though. Um, and it's like, I started watching Arrow, and from the first couple of episodes, like, I was in love with the show, like, it was amazing. Then I got to, like, season five, and I was like, it's it's sort of going downhill. Season six was like, I mean, I'm gonna watch it at this point, because I want to know how it ends, and then season seven was like, "Eh, I'm I'm done with this now. You ruin the enjoyment for yourself because you couldn't watch the bloody um, crossover episodes. That's what I was going to say. You have to watch them all. I just didn't. So what is it? It's crossover. Arrow, Flash, Supergirl. Supergirl. Uh, there's one more at least. Oh, the the, the two brothers. What's that? The two, the two brothers. brothers. Hold yes. On, hold on. Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, DC Legends of Tomorrow. That 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 ended up becoming part of it. Yeah. And the, then there was the two brothers. You know the guy from Prison Break? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The two brothers um, from there. They're in, what... in the other guy. Yeah. You guys they they, they became guys. part of DC Legends of Tomorrow. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Where they jump through time okay. to fix events. And yeah, so yeah. it's those four. But yeah, you yeah, have to like... watch all of those to know what's exactly going on. So here's the thing. I think why I liked the Arrow so much was because I loved the initial attitude that Oliver had in season one. Like, he was just a badass. And I Wall loved Strive. the flashback. Wall story. Strive just said Batgirl as well. That became very new into that universe. I've not got but, to that part. But that's a good season, by the way. But then she left the show. Hmm. Once the season was over, it was the weird. Horseman. But season two is picking up. To be fair, though, I need to... uh, Sorry, go on, James. I interrupted that. No, I was just going to say, I need to start watching it again. I haven't watched it for about two years. I'm so behind. What's that? For the whole DC universe. Oh, not... yeah. I don't even remember where I left off, so I need to find a random episode. I'm, I'm like... all up to date, I am. Because I um, legitly watched them. I used to watch them on the day of release. Like, as soon as they got released, I'd watch them that day. Yeah, I'd watch them like... Uh, Religiously. Uh, when it airs in America, I think it was. Yeah, exactly, yeah. See, I think I really took you by surprise when I actually started watching <coughs> Arrow because I'm not really big yeah. into DC, am I? 
Well, you're not really big into your superheroes at all, so I was surprised a little. I don't mind Marvel as much, um, but yeah, I'm definitely, definitely not into DC. It's like, one of my biggest all-time arguments is they're all set in the same world, all set in the same universe and all that. You've got someone like Superman, why can't he just handle everything himself? That's the wrong question. Uh, no, I know, off. but that, that's why, I, right that's why I'm not a fan of DC. The, the, the thing is, the, the DC have created this overpowered superhero that now it's just bullshit no matter what you throw at him. Um, what you should do, seeing as you're not really a DC guy or a superhero guy at all, is watch Batman vs Superman and give a fresh opinion on what you think of that movie. Right. I tried Ooh. to watch that. I really did try to watch that. I got like an hour to an hour and a half through it. I was bored to tears. Nothing happened. It's the shit. film's not boring, but it's, it's a ridiculous shit. ending. How the fuck did Batman kill Superman? Wait, what? Well, kill. Well, he didn't. Yeah, um, kill. But... That's what I mean, though. It's like, you've got all these, like, in the, monstrously... It gets, it gets buried and everything in the film. You don't yeah, know what's the, happening until the, the soil, very... The soil gives yeah, it away. Yeah. But, um, it's a terrible film, I think. I thought it was done all wrong. I think, like, most things on paper, this is going to be great. And then you watch it in the cinema, and it's like, well, that was a pile of dog crap. Here's my problem with DC. We bonded over Martha. We've got that my mama's name is the same. Martha! <laughs> Don't you say her name! <laughs> Here's my problem, though. Like, with DC, you've got your bog-standard humans as a superhero. And then you've yeah. got these jacked-up, super-powered monstrosities of heroes. It's mm. like, how are they on the same level? It, it, it well, I think makes I think sense to me, and like I, I think people get. find Batman relatable because he is just a human with high tech. That's it. And Under the billions costume, and billions and billions. Yeah, but he can still die just like any other human. Yeah. Problem with Superman is he's the most overpowered uh, hero ever, and it. This is, I think this is why I find Superman films boring. Yeah, because it doesn't matter it's what. It's gonna really involve Kryptonite, there. otherwise it doesn't matter. Hmm. And that's another thing. Everyone suddenly got their hands on kryptonite. I thought this was yeah. supposed to be a rare yeah, risk material. <laughs> yeah, but it's like at the same time though. Whenever like, you have to think, like you just said, kryptonite is a rarity. Yeah. Mm. At the same time though, every goddamn Superman film has his origin story. So maybe it yeah. is a rarity. Maybe it's just the same goddamn piece so of kryptonite every film. The first thing, the first thing that annoyed me about Batman vs Superman was they threw a Batman origin story in there on how he became Batman. We don't need that. Everybody knows Batman, even if you're fresh into the game. Right, here's the thing. I can think of two Batman films that don't have an origin story. Keep in mind, I've not seen like the latest Batmans like um, Bruce Bane or anything like that. I've not seen any of the more recent ones. Um, but we're talking only... about the 80s and shit. Those are the only two that I can think of that don't have an origin story. What, do you mean like Adam West? Batman Forever and stuff like that. Those uh, were good films, man. Not Adam oh, West. Oh, you can't move. Uh, you're on about, are you on about the movies? Not the anime, not, yeah, not yeah, TV's the film, the Batman films. Adam West. Uh, <laughs> oh, what, what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> he did Batman <laughs> in, um, three films. Uh, Batman that? Forever. No, uh, not uh, Thingy. Like, I'm trying to think it of the... It was the animated like, series. Name. No, no, no. I mean, the three oh. movies. The first one with... I think the first one was against Poison Ivy. Or was that the second one? I don't know. You're, then you had Bane. I know George. Freeze. I know jo George Clooney. George Clooney. Batman, that's the one. But yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Um, the first film out of that uh, trio had the origin story. The second and third didn't have the origin. Those are the only two films I can think of about Batman with no origin story. Hmm. I don't think Dark Knight does. I don't think I've seen that because that's the one against Bane, right? No, that's the one with Joker. Or yeah, is it? Yeah, that. Joker. I know. Is it Joker? Yeah. I'm just trying to think. I think the last Batman film I saw was Scarecrow. Dark Knight. This was, what? like, many, many years ago. Oh. What do you mean the last like Batman you saw was Scarecrow? That don't make any sense. No, the Scarecrow last was Batman <laughs> I saw, he fought Scarecrow. <coughs> okay. It was where he was taken to Nandapal Bot. And he was trained by the League. Which I actually didn't put two in, yeah, I didn't put I two, and two together with that until I started watching Arrow and I was speaking to you about it. Like, hang on, it, it, on is the guy who trained Batman. Val Kilmer, <laughs> by the way, was my favourite Batman. Val Kilmer, uh. Well, no, I mean, with DC, like, I don't know, there's just there's too many loopholes for me to really enjoy. But I think that's probably more on me than the story themselves. 
But I th- I well, think things it- are about to get complicated for you because in the upcoming Flashpoint Paradox movie, when that finally gets made, hmm. there there's going to be like uh, Batman's and Flashies from different universe, different Earths. So Val Kilmer is heavily spoken about for being one of uh, the Batmans in that movie of a different Earth. Uh, I don't know who else they're putting in, uh, whether or not they're going to go with um, Robert Pattinson or whoever. Uh, I have read that the original Flash from the old TV show back in the day is going to be a Flash from a different Earth. It all starts basically from Flash going back in time to fix something and changes the paradox of everything. Isn't Flash's dad the old Flash from the TV series or whatever? What? You know in the TV series at the moment? The Flash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... Oh, so you're... T- t- so, what, Barry Allen from yeah. the Flash TV series is going to be an alternate Flash inside of this film? There's there's that that's questioned, and uh, Ezra Miller, I want to say, from the New Justice League. Okay. Um, Because... The, the whole Flashpoint paradox is where he goes back in time, uh, I think he's to save his mother from dying, um, and changes the outcome of pretty much everything as it's known. So you've got these multiple Earths and then multiple Batman and multiple Flash yeah. from different Earths invading. Fair enough. I'll, I'll some honest. bad, some good. I was listening not to everything you just said. I did <laughs> not understand a word of it. <laughs> All I got is multiple world, multiple time travel. Bands. Yeah, time, time, travel. Travel. time travel shenanigans. <laughs> Moving it's on. Like, you lost me so badly there. And we completely sidetracked again, by the way. I mean, that, that's all right, to be fair. Like, you were you were going off there. <laughs> it's like, I can tell the, you're a fan. Yeah, it's like, I think that's the first time you've actually gone off like that. In oh, I can geek out over stuff had. like that. Well, at the same time, I think it's nice that we can actually just sit back and talk about movies and TV series instead of just games in general. Yeah, yeah. It's quite refreshing, actually. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, it's like... When was the last time we had such... I mean, I suppose in-depth, really, conversation about anything like that? I mean, to be Well, it's, to... Difficult, it's difficult to have a conversation to, uh, with you in-depth about anything superhero, because you'll just be like... <laughs> don't know what, what you're talking about. <laughs> I know, I love you. Know, I know a lot of. Superheroes. And I'm sure it's the same if you try to talk to me about Final Fantasy. <laughs> I know a lot of superheroes, just not from DC. I mean, to be, well, to be fair, I know a lot of the heroes. I just don't know much about them. Like, I could name a bunch of DC heroes, but what they do, hmm. it's like. Um, Hang on, let me see how many I can name. And if I actually name a Marvel one here, please jump in and call me an idiot. So, Green Lantern. Are you naming DC heroes, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to see okay. how many I can name. So, there's Green Lantern. Not to be confused with Green uh, Arrow. <laughs> um, I mean, Lantern. Green Arrow, Arrow as you just said. Um, Batman, Superman, Supergirl. Um... I'm going to say know. John because I don't know what his... John? I don't know what his... Is he the Martian? Oh, you know what Martian Manhunter? I, I, I have no idea, dude. He was You're talking the, about... He was from the Justice League Kids show. Like, he was yeah. some green alien dude. Martian Manhunter by the sounds of it. All I know is his name was John. He's the... It is in charge of the... by the sounds of it. Is it the guy that's, like, in Flash and everything? The guy that's in charge of the... I can't even remember what they're called now, the unit. What's his weakness? If it's fire, it's Martian Manhunter. I don't know. I'm talking from like 20 years ago. He could fly through things. He is from Mars, so probably. And he's definitely called John, I think. I feel like it's Martian Manhunter. Okay, well, we'll... we'll, we'll Does he wear a cape? Yeah. That's like one of the only things he wears. That's the only green alien John I can think of with a cape. (laughs) (laughs) Um... I mean, like James whispered, there's Batgirl. Um, I mean, Robbie. I just but is. I mean, yeah, I yeah, suppose he's still technically DC. Um, Cyborg. 
I'll be honest, you're doing better than I would. To be fair, the only reason I say cyborg is because he's in Teen Titans, and if he's in Teen I Titans, then it. I knew it. I knew that it. Means so it's just, in the same he's been watching Teen Robin. Titans. He has. <laughs> um, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy. Because you've watched Titans. Well, I watched the uh, the kids show of Teen Titans. Oh, you need to watch the actual yes. show. You need to watch um, the actual show, the live action show of Titans. I don't know. I mean, I was looking at that but i didn't like the way they did starfire because she was like my totally my favorite character from the original teen titans uh cartoon so it's mm. like if they did her bad i was like yeah i'm probably not gonna watch this to be fair Bad boy. um i don't know if you can really count blackwing because he's technically robin right D- uh, uh nightwing <laughs> close enough <laughs> blackwing <laughs> I was nearly one, right. One of them was. One of them became Nightwing, and the other one became Red Hood. Red Hood? Jesus, Alan, you know more than I've expected you to know. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. Like, you, you should see his place. It's full-on DC. It's not that bad. And it's not full-on DC. I love Marvel equally. I mean, I, I've seen your hallway. I've seen those comics. I mean, there is an X Men poster there, so he's he's not lying. He does yeah. like Marvel. Mm. Well, it's like, what do you have a favorite out between Marvel and DC? Uh, depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about movies versus comics, I mean, sure, or sure, just sure. a favorite brand. I mean, either. It's difficult because DC aren't doing any favors to make me like them on the big screen, whereas Marvel are. But DC Comics and animated series are amazing, whereas Marvel ain't. So, in terms of collectibles and figures and stuff, I'll just buy both brands. Uh, you've gone like Super Minecraft again. Have I? Oh wait, there, there we go. There we go. Your camera's fine. I've just again. seen it on the stream. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you were Super Minecraft for a second there. <laughs> I'm a creeper. We, we need to get you a new mic. Uh, new mic, new camera. Yeah, I need a new camera. Because this one is. Pure Minecraft at the moment. It's like you're you're being turned into pixel art right now. I can see it on the stream. Oh wait, no, there, there we go. It's settling again. It's settling. But no, um, I think when it comes to DC and Marvel, like for me, both are essentially the same. I have to like the character before I can get into them. It's like yeah. it's no surprise that when it comes to DC, my favorite is Arrow. Um, and when it comes to Marvel, my favourite is Iron Man. Because you've got, like, just two rich as all hell people with really bad attitudes that are hilarious. So they, when it they... comes to Marvel, I'm a big Deadpool guy. I mean, Deadpool, Deadpool is yeah. To be fair, though, I, I don't know if I like Deadpool for the fact that he's Deadpool or for the fact that it's Ryan Reynolds in the movie. It I think it's so kind of well. Ryan Reynolds for me. It mm. works so well. I think that's bec- I think that's what it is for me as well, because I love all of his other films. Like, um... Uh, the bodyguard. This is what the bodyguard. Yeah, that's a good film. Yeah. Oh Have you not yeah. Seen it? It's where he it tries was... to protect no, Samuel yeah, Jackson. Was... Yeah. For some reason, I was thinking of the old one back in the day. With was it Whitney Houston or something? <laughs> not a clue. Um, <laughs> no, I've seen the bodyguard. Yeah. I'm trying to. There's another one that he's done that I really, really like, but I can't think of the name. Um, it's where he basically takes these people who have these like um, accidents, and they basically they aren't dead like they survived the accident but the world thinks they're dead sort of thing they become like agents and shit like trying to stop all these like i want to say terrorists and that but it's so funny in the way they do it is that the one with the guy with the big gun now is it down to every action film ever yes <laughs> um, it's the one where they're on the boat and he uses like giant magnets to kill everybody basically is that know. the one with the guy with the big gun? I, <laughs> as in like, his partner. How many, how many how many action films do you know, Al, with guys with big guns? Oh, loads. Um, it's really good. Oh, I tell you what I did recently, Marathon, though. The Expendables. Oh. See, I was a fan when I first started watching those. And then by the, the first third one. one, I was... Yeah. And then like, by the third one, I was like... Mm. Didn't you like when they brought Chuck Norris into it? I thought it became gimmicky. I still liked what they did, but it just became It is gimmicky. gimmicky, yeah. It is definitely very, very gimmicky. But it's one of those films, I think... And honestly, I, I, was, I was disappointed that an extra fist didn't come out of Chuck Norris's beard. Just just to punch out his foes. That's the thing, though. It's like, they did so well, many why, Chuck why Norris jokes, he, but they did yeah, do why, that one. 
Yeah, and also, why didn't he wrestle with a snake? Like, the, the, some of these Chuck, Chuck Norris jokes that they could have put in there would have been pretty sweet. Do you think they'd like to... Do you think they'd make a new Expandables? Like, do you think a new one would work? No. I don't think the last one worked. I don't think it'll work, but do I think they'll do <laughs> another one? Probably. I don't know, because, I mean, a lot of the actors are getting you, on now. Yeah, I know, but that's how you bring in the younger ones. Like, I think one of those had um, Jet Li in. Uh, you could bring up Jason Statham. He's in, um, he's in a mall. Is yeah. Jason Statham in a mall? Yeah, he throws the knives or whatever. Yeah, he's the knife right? Oh, shit, yeah. Okay, so they've already got the fucking names. Have they used Jean-Claude Van Damme yet? Yeah, he was a bad guy. Uh, yeah. I want to say three? Three or two. Because, um, oh, crap. Have they used Terry Crews? He's a hench guy. No, I don't think they've no. used him yet. He'd be good. Here's the question, though. If they made a new Expendables, what are the odds The Rock would be in them? He has to be. I mean, he's, he's all over the place now. He's everything these days, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. To be fair, though, um, I do want to watch Red Card. What's that? Uh, it's something he's doing with Ryan Reynolds. They've just finished filming it, so it's going to be like edited and then probably out sometime next year. Um, Speaking like, of... Uh, no, go uh, on, I'll let you finish. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, like... Um, the only reason I know of it is because The Rock posted on Facebook like um, a picture basically saying, we just finished filming. You've got Rock and this girl like right next to each other. Ryan Reynolds on the end of him and he's just off staring into space like, how the fuck did I end up here? So it's like, to me, that's like, okay, this is going to be a funny film to be funny. I think that would be funny because The Rock and Kevin Hart work well as well. So I can imagine that being the same sort of vibe with yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I, I do like uh, films with Kevin Hart in as well, to be fair. It's like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I've been on an action film binge lately. It's like, I've gone through pretty much all of Jason Statham's films. Um, I went through a lot of the old Jackie Chan films as well. Like, I forgot just how good those films actually were. Rush Hour. Uh, Rush Hour, Medallion, um, Tuxedo. Um, one thing I haven't actually gone back and watched, which, to be fair, I'm probably going to do tomorrow, is Austin Powers. <laughs> I, mean, I used to gotta, love Austin Powers. God, I love Austin Powers, man. It's so funny. So, you know, chat, get ready to hate me because I don't like Austin Powers. You are? I, I don't think it's groovy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good impression, man. <laughs> it was. But, I mean, you don't like Austin Powers? You don't find it funny or anything like that? Nah. I mean, it... It is a specific humour. It is. It's very specific humour. Hmm. I get how it's comedy, but it doesn't exactly make me laugh while watching it. Yeah. It's like I could watch slapstick comedy and not laugh at that. Here's the Fair thing, enough. though. I think comedy these days is really going downhill. Well, it's difficult when the world's turning to PC culture. Yeah, pretty much. It's like you, limited you do, to what you can do. Yeah, it's like you do still have the few comedians who will basically say whatever they want, and then if somebody tries to take offense to it, the comedian will just be like, Oh, boo hoo, bugger off. It's like they just. Yeah, it's different with stand up. Yeah, I know, but what I mean is, like, not all stand up still follows that, though. It's like a lot of more bowing to, as you say, the PC culture now. And it's like, I think that's ruining entertainment in general. It's like, not entertainment in general, but specifically comedy. Hmm. Well, it's like, look, look at the Austin Powers films. There's a lot of jokes in those films that. Honestly, if they tried to do now, imagine the backlash it would get. Yeah, it probably would. Only I mean, Fools and Horses from back in the day as well would get a lot of backlash today. Oh, yeah. I've never seen it. You've yeah, never seen that, Only Fools and Horses? because he's, he's still I've a kid. Bit. I've seen he's bits. I've seen bits. I'm like three <laughs> years younger than you. <laughs> I still watch that show to this day. I love that show. I mean, I've so seen clips of it, but I've never really sat down and watched the whole thing. You des. <laughs> this time next year, we'll be millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the one thing I do want to rewatch: two packets of crisps and a pint of lager. No, no two, two pints, pints of lager and a pint of crisps. crisps. I got there yeah. in the end. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! It's been off two the air for like ten years. And a pint of lager. <laughs> Jesus Christ, son. <laughs> It's been like 10 years. I got uh, there in the to end. Meme that. Two packs of crisps <coughs> and a pint of lager. <coughs> we need to I meme mean, that. Hey, these days you don't only have time for oh, a pint know, of lager. Um, Will Mallet and I think uh, the guy who played Johnny is called Ralph Little. I could be wrong. 
uh, they've got their own sort of like two pints podcast now. Hmm. It's really good. No, I didn't know that. To be yeah. fair, I haven't actually looked into anything related to the show in a long, long time. It's like the last time I was looking into it, um, they were meant to be coming back for like an extra season, but that, like, yeah, that was like two season? Christmases ago. I'm still yeah, waiting for I the Christmas that. special. No, it was even longer than that. I mean, like a full blown season, not just an episode. But it's like, that's oh, what I mean. It's I, like, I, the last time I was I, looking into it, it was just like a constant, yeah, we're going to have another final season. No, we're not having a final season. Good news, we're having another final season, and we're not having a final season. It's like it just I'll, kept going back and forth between what we are having another one and we're not. I think a lot of shit happened with Sheridan Smith, though, that postponed it a lot. Who played Janet. Okay. The blonde. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I feel like it's been like two Christmases or something since they announced they were doing a Christmas special. And I'm still waiting. That, that's the thing, though. It's like that show is plagued by problems, isn't it? But that show did go downhill, to be fair, once they killed Johnny off. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll agree. I still think the best episode, though, is probably that, um, that musical mock one they did. Which I think is like the... Was it the very first one, or was it just like a oh, mid-season? Season? Um, I got my lovely crunchy biscuits. biscuits. Hell, I'm gonna say it again in case yeah. you missed it. I'm surprised you can yeah. still remember that. <laughs> That's a tune. <laughs> I remember hey, when we all used to have that as like a phone ringtones back when we were like 14. Yeah, back on like our old Sony Ericsson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what though, it's like there's so many things you see nowadays and it just makes you feel old. And it's like... Oh, I'm embracing the boomer I am. Hmm. I'm getting sick and tired of tech. <laughs> I mean, to tech be fair, like, it, it, like tech. to be fair though, tech does doesn't work for you. It doesn't. But no, it's like someone posted on um, Facebook the other day, um, like on the Fence and Sale page. They were selling Indiana Jones VHS tapes, and I was like, Holy I saw you comment crap. on that, <laughs> dude. I was like, wait, what? People still have these things? And it's like, you don't have a VHS player. There'll, there'll be collections. Like, here's stuff. the thing. That's I've what I two. said, Jake. Here's like that's literally what I said. Like, let alone <clears> the last time I saw a VHS tape. I can't remember the last time I saw somebody wo- like with an actual working player. Let alone a TV two. they could connect it to. I have two that work. But people you, collect you have a VHS tapes. You can tapes connect it to. Yeah, you just need adapters. Well, yeah, but I mean, like with the actual SCART and that. No, because TVs don't have SCARTs anymore, but. But yeah, people genuinely I mean, collect like. videotapes, though. Videotapes are worth a lot of money now. Yeah. I know, it's just not one of those things you typically see, especially someone trying to sell for three quid. Mm. It's, like, it's, only the same, it's only the same as like somebody having a... Um, what was it? The turntable thing. Can't remember what it was called. You put the pin down, you play your music. Vinyls. I mean, no, vinyls those, are still pretty would... popular. Yeah. yeah, they're vintage. But mm. they, they, yeah, they're, they're vintage, but they sort of became a trend when they brought out the, the brand new sort of retro ones. They brought them back again as new ones. Yeah, but. But I in mean, like a case. Isn't that just for the. Uh, oh, crap. What are they called? There's people who just like love all things retro and that. Um, I can't think of what they're called. I thought that was vintage, wasn't it? No, no, no. I mean, like, the, uh, like, 18, 19, 20-year-olds in, like, a coffee shop in, like, really old-fashioned clothes and that. Uh, is it Indies? It it's not Indies, no, is it? No, no. No, no, no. It's like, there was a name for these type of people. I can't remember what it was. Like, I haven't seen anyone get called this in years and years and years, though. So it's just completely fell out of mind with it. I just called him Retro. Just leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, might as well. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, we are sort of approaching time, so uh, should we call it there for this week? No. <laughs> what have you got to add then, my friend? Fuck Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Two times one podcast. Uh, Did you get a bag of rice? No, no. But I'm sure if I buy whatever, a phone stand, dog food, my next monitor, I'm probably going to get a bag of rice. And it's probably already going to be damaged and get sent back mid-transit. Be- before we do end, I have one question to ask. Like, I wonder if this was actually a general fuck-up and people who ordered a big bag of rice are now getting PS5s. 
<laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> that that would be PS5 for £2.50, yeah. <laughs> no, though, no, could, could you seriously imagine if it was just a general shipping fuck up? It, it, it wouldn't be. I mean, I know, but could you imagine? That would be hilarious. I mean, there's got to be a weight difference between a bag of rice and a PlayStation. Well, that's what bugged me when I saw a lot of these bags. So they were about five kilo, which is about what yeah, the PS5 not, is. Not all of them. The guy that owns, is it PSU or whatever, that website, he got screwed over by it as well. And his was just a Nerf gun. And it was tiny. When he picked that up, that would have been weightless. He would have known yeah. that's not a PS5. Moon's just come to the save in the comments. Hipsters. Hipsters. Uh, Thank you, Moon. That is the word I was looking for. And I've already completely forgotten the topic we were on about that I actually needed that word. God damn it. Coffee shops and retro stuff. Yeah, you were on about them bringing vinyls back with you, and I was like, I'm fairly sure that was just for, like, the hipsters and that. Yeah. And collectors, but yeah. Well, yeah. But anyway, um, do you guys have anything you want to add before we uh, we call it? James? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go and annoy these two and play on my PS5. Uh, yeah, see you later. <laughs> uh, uh, just, you know, send James some hate email, because he's got a PS5, and... Uh... Till next time. <laughs> exactly, and uh, like Alan just said, everybody, if you do want to send James some hate mail, come join the Discord, which is linked down below in the description. He is known as Withered Waste on there, so feel free to send him as much <laughs> shit as you want. You have my permission for this. Anyway, though, <laughs> no mind. Thank you all for watching episode number ten of the Simply Complicated <laughs> podcast. We hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, we shall see you later. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>